Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Lenz Grimmer. I'm a member of the CEF Manager Dashboard team. And in this short video, I would like to give you a quick update and, and overview of the CEF Manager Dashboard in its current form, um, in which we are heading for the CEF Nautilus release. This is not fully complete yet, but I hope it gives you an impression of what you can expect from Ceph Nautilus when it comes to the dashboard. So this is going to be a quick tour. I hope I will be able to create some follow up videos that show some of these features in more detail to keep the time short. But already on the front page, as you can see, there's a major change here. The dashboard is now supported in multiple languages. The translations aren't complete yet and we are seeking your help in, in adding translations, but it will be possible to choose your language and then the dashboard will be localized in, in that particular language. I'm going to stick to English and going to enter my username, which also is a new change in the dashboard in Nautilus. We now support not just a, a single user account, but you can create as many different users as you like and you can assign roles to them. I'm going to go over those screens in a minute as well. So let's log in. Also a change that is not visible here, but it's possible to use single sign on using SAML. So if you are in an environment where your authentication is performed by an external identity provider that supports the SAML protocol, you can configure the dashboard to use that one instead. Also a visible notable change to the previous version is the new landing page that we have implemented. This consists of native JavaScript widgets, which give you more or less instant feedback to changes on your cluster. So if your PGs change or if OSDs go down, the dashboard will notify you about this visually here. So this is something that you can put on a screen somewhere in the data center to keep an overall overview of how your cluster is doing. From here, you can also reach most of the, the sub pages of the dashboard. Let's start by clicking on hosts here to move over to the hosts page. This is just a demo environment. So the list isn't very impressive. It just consists of a single host that consists of all the services that are currently running. I could have also reached that page by going via cluster hosts. Also new, in the dashboard is the embedding of Grafana dashboards. So we use Prometheus and Grafana in the background to collect metrics. And these Grafana dashboards can be embedded into the self manager dashboard to give you even more insight into various operation activities. So on the host list itself, I can click and get some more details visualized by Grafana for that particular host. I could also click on each of the services running here to get some additional metrics. Let's go to the Rados gateway, for example. Yeah, just some tables with more data and information that is um, that also depends on what service you're looking at. More interesting pages likely is the monitors page, which shows you all the available monitors, if they are in quorum or if some of, of the monitors is down, how many sessions they are running. Moving on, OSDs, this is likely a page that you will want to look at more frequently. Each OSD has an own row in its table. If you click on overall performance, you get again Grafana metrics that summarize um, OSD activities. For each individual OSD, you can also click on it to get various attributes, the metadata, lots of text information, but also another Grafana dashboard customized for that particular OSD. It's possible to set and change cluster white flags. For example, if you are making maintenance and you don't want OSDs to automatically go up again, you can say, check the no up flag here. So these are various things that administrators usually have to do on the command line. Another feature that we've added here is that it's possible to quickly change the overall cluster wide um, recovery priority. So you can choose between three different settings if you want to prioritize um, the OSDs to take more time on, on yeah, rebalancing or if they take more time in, in serving clients. This is something that can be configured through these values here. 
that's the USD page. Um, other activities you can choose are, of course, you can scrub them, you can mark them as out and down, adding reweight, all those things that belong to frequent OSD management. Moving on, configuration is a config editor that allows you to basically tweak at every configuration setting that Ceph is capable of, which are quite a few. Um, it's easy to just search for relevant ones here by entering the search term. Um, you can also tell which level you want to look at if you want to see development settings or just the, the default ones limited to specific services. And then you just can, can click on the setting, see a description, or if you want to make changes to the setting, this is the dialogue to do it. All right, crash map is a new feature which gives you a read-only visualization of your crash map of the OSDs, which um, host they belong to. So, so this somewhat visualizes um, the, the cluster's um, internal hierarchy, the failure domains that you've designed. And so this is a first impression. In future versions, of course, we will add more features to make it possible to make more changes to the crash map and the layout. Logs, yep, is a log viewer, as you could expect. So this is the overall cluster log. Basically, the health warnings and everything are logged here. There's an audit log that gives you more detailed information about changes taking place in the cluster and who initiated them. Yeah, that's the logging. Go moving to pools, which is another area that is very central to Ceph. This table lists you all the various pools that have been created, their current status, um, utilization, things like that. With most tables, it's possible to quickly search them. If you just want to see all um, pools that relate to CephFS, you just enter the string here and it will then trim the view accordingly. Again, um, we embedded Grafana dashboards to make it uh, more easy to see performance issues. IOPS throughput for that particular pool and then of course overall summarized across all pools to get a quicker update. There are various activities that you can perform on pools. Most notably of course you can add new ones. That's shown here. I'm going to show this dialogue in more detail in a separate video just to speed up the video here. Go back. Block is Rados block devices, RBDs. So there's a table that shows you all the existing RBDs in your cluster. Again, we have Grafana metrics that show the overall throughput and performance. The list um, of RBDs, you can also select individual ones to get more details about them. If they have any snapshots, you can create new snapshots, new snapshots here. Again, this is probably something for a dedicated video. Mirroring allows you to configure um, asynchronous mirroring of RBD pools or individual images from one cluster to another one. This is configurable here. You also see the state of the images down here. This is currently not configured, so there isn't much to see. iSCSI would show you all the various iSCSI um, services that are up and running, which images are served. There's a, a pull request in the pipeline um, that will add much more full-featured iSCSI management to the dashboard. Again, this should be covered in a separate video. CephFS file systems are shown here. For each file system, we have an entry in the table where you can see the amount of clients, the current ongoing IO activities. Again, an embedded Grafana dashboard to give you some more insight into how CephFS is doing. Object gateways, the last management part here, which is the, the Rados gateway. You can take a look at all of the configured Rados gateway instances here. I just have a single one, um, some more details about that. Again, Grafana dashboards give you some further insight and we have an accumulated view across all Rados gateways if you have several of those. For Rados gateway, of course, you have a, a way to manage the users that have been configured. You could create additional keys for them. You can assign quotas. 
um, obtain the keys to hand them out to users, add new ones if you want to, delete existing ones, everything that you would expect. Similar for buckets, each user can have buckets, you can create new buckets here, you can delete them. So basically most of the features that are available through the Radus Gateway Admin Ops API um, are available through a web UI here. That's it about the self management functionality of the dashboard. Again, up here you can choose the, the designed languages. This icon gives you a list of ongoing activities, recent notifications, help. We also have a way to configure the users here in the user management. So right now we just have a single admin user. They can have roles which are defined here. These are the system roles that ship out of the box, but you can add more if you have specific needs. Um, there are various scopes and for each scope you can define if the user has read, create, update or delete privileges for that particular scope. Hopefully this system is flexible enough. Let us know what you think about it. And with that, I'm going to conclude my quick overview of the Ceph Manager dashboard. Um, more to come. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.